Exclamation marks! You gotta love them. All the fun are shouting, but without the threat of imminent violence. Today, we've got a double feature for you. We're reviewing Blitzkrieg, sorry, Blitzkrieg and Caesar! Two terrific tests of tactical talent designed by Paolo Mori and sent to us by PSC Games. With Blitzkrieg offering World War II in 20 minutes and the new sequel, Caesar, suggesting you seize Rome in 20 minutes. Caesar? I hardly knew her! But you'll see, you'll know, you'll, you'll know both of these games by the end of this review. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is Caesar in a plastic bag? Is it because Quinns hasn't yet cut it from the amniotic sac that it was birthed in? Having been recently disgorged from some unthinkable cardboard mother that I keep in my cupboard? It's not true. PSC Games just happened to send us an early prototype of Caesar, so it's important that you guys know what you see on camera is not quite the finished product. But as a professional, obviously, I'm fine being sent this copy of the game. I will never love you. So, what are you looking at here? Well, in both of these games, two players will each put matching sets of armies into a bag, draw some tiles that they hide behind their screen, and then take turns placing those tiles onto the board until somebody wins. And in both games, players are trying to balance when to spend their time gobbling up spicy little bonuses that'll make them stronger, and when to instead spend their time trying to, you know, win the game. Where the games differ is that Blitzkrieg is much more thematic. It's full of all these extra rules and details to better represent that crazy time we call World War II. Whereas Caesar is simpler. It's a lot more shrewd, and if I'm being generous, it's closer to the kind of abstract games that were literally played in ancient Rome. But stop the review! Indulge me for a second, because I want to spend a bit of time talking about the man who made these games. Italian designer Paolo Mori is one of a small handful of designers that I like so much that if they turned out to be my dad, I would be broadly okay with that. Paolo first crossed Shut Up and Sit Down's desk with Libertalia, a very simple, very funny, very clever game of pirates trying to divide up loot, frequently killing one another entirely by accident. But unfortunately, you can't buy it anymore. It's out of print. Then came his game Dogs of War. Another very simple, very clever game of players being breathtakingly cruel to one another. You all play mercenary captains trying to lend your support to the winning side of a series of battles, but who wins those battles is down to who you and your friends choose to support. But the publishers shipped it in a massive box full of pointless plastic, making it too expensive, and it's also now super out of print. And then came Ethnos. Another very simple, very satisfying, very clever game of fantasy creatures trying to control areas. Except the publishers, the same publishers as Dogs of War in fact, wrapped it up in this super generic fantasy setting full of more ugly plastic. I mean, they also called it Ethnos. I think at the time we're releasing this video today, there might be some stock left, but Matt and I always felt that with a different publisher, Ethnos could have been a classic. Now there are designers out there, not, not like out, out here, but who make solid games. And there are designers who make new kinds of games. Paolo somehow seems to do both. He makes solid and simple games that emerge from his brain fully formed and fully fun. Like how baby giraffes will like fall six feet out of their mum and then just immediately stand up and start going about their business. This is what Paolo makes. He makes tiny giraffes that I like. And if you're watching this, Paolo, I, I love you. Back to war, and I am happy to say that these two games are two more of Paolo's tiny baby giraffes. You will not have played anything quite like them. They're both exquisitely simple, and they're both fantastic fun. Let's start with Blitzkrieg. So, players in Blitzkrieg are going to be sweating over which of their different tiles they're going to deploy to one of five different theatres in World War II. Western Rup, Pakvikokyan, Eastern Rup, Afkas Medlet and East South Aslet. Not totally sure what the joke was there, but reading that did make me feel like I was having a stroke. If you've got a tank, you can slap that heavy metal boy on any brown space, moving that theater's war marker that many spaces towards you, winning that theater. If you've got a ship, splash that long fella down in any blue space and move the marker. If you've got a plane, you won't believe it. Planes can go anywhere, they just don't care. They're above all of that. 
And that's the whole game. You're just going to place a tile on a space. You're going to reach into your bag with the inexplicable silken texture of military issue lingerie and put a new tile behind your bag. Then your opponent will take their turn. Now, as you're doing all of this, you've got two considerations. And the first is, you know, winning the war. Every time a row gets fully filled up, you check who's winning that theater and they get this many victory points, plus an extra point or two if they're really winning. The first player to 25 points wins the game. But here's the catch, and it's a big one. You will not believe the size of this catch. Ooh. No. Whenever you place a tile in Blitzkrieg, you also get the enormous bonus on that square. You might get a bonus to winning that theater. You might get straight up victory points. Most exciting of all, you might research a random new super weapon that you're gonna pop into your bag and then hopefully draw it soon, please. You might also get to draw an extra tile that round, improving your selection of what you can place, or you can bomb tiles out from behind your opponent's screen. And in fact, if your opponent gets bombed so bad that they have no tiles behind their screen when it's their turn to place one, you actually win the game. It's an alternate victory condition. That's the best kind of victory condition. So Blitzkrieg is kind of a combination of tugs of war and shopping. You're gonna wanna grab the fattest and juiciest bonuses before your opponent, but to focus on that is a risk because if your opponent ever manages to drag their cube all the way to the end of one of these tracks, that theater is closed and they immediately get everything in it. Not just all of the victory points, but all of the bonuses on the untouched squares in a disgusting payday. That's it. Those are all of the rules of Blitzkrieg. And yet, like the very best Paolo Mori designs, you sit players in this simple framework and they immediately start freaking out because to decide what to do, you're trying to weigh up all these elements against one another in a way that defies calculation. You're thinking about what tiles you've got, when to use them, and which ones to keep back. You're thinking about which bonuses you need, but then you're also weighing that, or trying to, against the victory points you need to win the game. You're also tempted by that track you might be able to push to the end and afraid of the one your opponent is pushing hard. You do want to place a tile here to close this campaign and lock in the victory points, but you don't actually really want to do that because then your opponent will have the first pick of the fat rewards in the next row. But oh no, you've delayed too long and they found a tile with a massive number on it and now they won that campaign instead of you. Blitzkrieg is the kind of game that gets players super excited to take their first move the moment the very quick rules explanation is over because they've already got secrets behind their screen. They already see bonuses they want. But if Blitzkrieg has a strong beginning, it has a fantastic middle and end as well. In fact, Blitzkrieg has my favorite structure that a game can have, as capably symbolized by the curvaceous form of the reference pair. The decision space starts broad, only gets broader, but as time goes on and players get tired, the number of choices players have slowly tapers as you approach the finale. Mm, at the start of Blitzkrieg, you have all these options and all these bonuses you're gonna wanna take before your opponent can, and that lends the opening act of the game a sense of immediacy and danger. In the middle of the game, the tactical considerations have blossomed outwards as players now struggle to consider five different game states at once, and then 10 minutes later, as you approach the end and theaters start closing, these different ribbons of thought have come back together in one satisfying bow. I am rather good at Blitzkrieg. I am not good at Caesar. Caesar does not start you with three tiles. It starts you with just two. And where in Blitzkrieg there were land and sea spaces, in Caesar there are three kinds of spaces limiting where you can put your tiles. So from turn one, Caesar is a more intense and intimate experience where players are gonna be wondering what their opponent's hiding behind their screen. You're wondering where you can go that your opponent won't be able to stop you. The other big difference is that where Blitzkrieg gives you all kinds of fun stuff, in Caesar, there is no fun stuff. There's no ancient Roman scientist lady. To the best of my knowledge, Pompey never once deployed an atom bomb. This is now a much more serious and stoic contest. If you want a bonus, which is Latin for bonus, you can't just place one tile anymore. If you want a reward, you're gonna have to wrestle it out of your opponent's hands. Players in Caesar instead place their tiles on borders, adding strength to two regions at once. Then you draw a new tile and that's the end of your turn, same as in Blitzkrieg. And you do this until someone has sealed in a region totally, at which point you resolve it. 
The player who plays the final disc that locks that region in is the one of you that gets the bonus, which might be an extra draw, which in Caesar is massive, an extra turn, which is massive, or flipping one of your opponent's discs, which is massive. But it's the player with the highest strength pointing into that region that wins control of it, and the first player to deploy all of their control tiles wins the game. So that's straightforward enough, maybe even a little bit pedestrian, which is why Caesar has a couple more rules that single-handedly make this game feel like you're wrestling for control of a knife. When a player takes control of a region, they place an extra control tile for every adjacent region that they already control. And if you collected one of these Senate bonus tiles because you locked off the region and you won it, you place an extra number of control tokens equal to the number of Senate tokens that you've collected. So if you stop paying attention to Caesar for a moment, or if your opponent just outplays you, or if your bag betrays you, et tu bagus, your opponent might be able to place a disc that splatters five of their control tokens across the board. And this gives Caesar a fantastic kind of escalating tension that's very different from Blitzkrieg, where your opening moves are sort of testing and exploratory. But as more of the borders get filled up, as more of the regions get taken, as players collect more Senate tiles, the game simply becomes more and more dangerous, where by placing less and less armies, you can place more and more control tiles. So the game always builds up to this crescendo that's very different to Blitzkrieg, where players get their nerves more and more frayed, they become more and more panicked until, ah, someone places the final tile that gets them the win, and you just look at your opponent and think, that was awesome. Do you want to have a rematch? Or here's another way to illustrate the difference between the two games. Caesar is such a tight contest and it's so entertaining to play competitively that I chose to memorize the distribution of tiles in the two bags, right? Both players get of the three specific army types, a 6-0, a 5-1, a 4-2, and a 3-3. Then of the wilds, you get a 4-0, a 3-1, and two 2-2s. Two if you ask me what's in the Blitzkrieg bag, I'd be like, uh, I mean, okay, there's some tanks, obviously, probably an equal number of tanks and boats. The tanks have numbers on. I'm gonna do both of my conclusions at the same time. So the phrase, oh, what a lovely war, has never been more apt. I love that both of these games are cheap to buy. I love that they're so quick to set up that when I was doing it for this review, I couldn't quite believe how quick it was. And then they're also quick to teach, and they're also quick to play, and they're also just a blast. Like a refreshing cup of ice water, but blasted at you, but from an unexpected direction. Both of these games are going straight in my collection, and that is an easy decision to make, because not only do I not own anything quite like these games, but they come in these mercifully small boxes. And these small boxes are also nice because environmental concerns are mattering more and more to more and more people than I know in the tabletop hobby, and I am certainly among those people. And small boxes cost less energy to manufacture and less energy to transport. And also, these games are both almost entirely cardboard, which is really environmentally friendly. As to which you should buy, I'd say that I don't think you can go wrong. But Blitzkrieg is the more thematic, surprising, goofy experience, and Caesar is the game to buy if you love sitting down with people and really trying to best them. But let's give you some alternative recommendations if you're in the market for some games that let two players sit across the table and just slap the heck out of one another. You should definitely check out our review of Summoner Wars 2nd Edition, which actually has some starter kits that retail at the same low, low price as Blitzkrieg and Caesar. Or for another game that delivers World War II hijinks in about half an hour, you should definitely check out the excellent and endlessly expandable Memoir 44. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I, ooh, 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 I think that's the next review copy coming in. Hello, my lovely, ooh, ooh, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out, oh my god, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh God, let's give that a, let's give that a quick wipe down. Mm. Mm. Oh, is it? Oh, is that? That's the crew mission deep sea. We covered this like three times already. Oh, you can just, you can just, uh, uh, oh, you know what? You are more bloody trouble than you're worth. See you next time, everybody.